Hello everyone, my name is Pablo de la Cruz and today we're going to be talking about functors and monads in JavaScript. Let's get a quick overview of my presentation. First we're going to talk about functors because before we learn about monads we got to learn about functors. So we're going to go over types of functors, why there's a little confusion in the community as far as when you're first learning and understanding functors and monads, people could get confused. And then I'm going to show you a few examples. From there, we're going to move on to monads, why they're important, why they're interesting to us, and then a few more examples. So functors. In the very simplest term, a functor is an, are objects that can implement map. That's pretty much all they are. So arrays, you can implement map on them, single values, object literals, and pure functions. You could, as long as you can map it, as long as you can map it, you could basically call it a functor. So why is there so much confusion around this topic? Well, basically, functors are derived from category theory and mathematics. And if you're not studying category theory, if you don't have a PhD in mathematics, you might get a little confused. But for our, <laughs> for our purposes, we, we could kind of simplify functors to how we use them in computers in programming. Um, in computer science, functors are commonly referred to as higher order functions, which is not exactly how we refer to them in programming. And online, the people that speak about functors and monads, and they're, they're very strict about how they define a functor for different reasons. And also, they use different names to mean the same thing, but it, it all makes sense. <laughs> Once, once you learn a little bit about it. And you, you guys will see there's nothing crazy going on in, the, in this subject. So here are some things that functors do. Um, they, like, like we said earlier, they, as long as you can map it, it's basically like a functor. So there, you know, there's transformation of content. As you can see in this first example, the fat arrow function transforms the content of the array through the map. Then Functors must also maintain structure. So after you apply map to it, the structure has to be maintained. So if you put in an array, you, you shouldn't be getting something completely different from that array. You should be getting the same type of structure. Um, and at the end of it, you get another functor. And that's what makes them kind of powerful. You put in the first array, one, two, three, four, through Using map, you transform it, and then you can keep mapping and keep doing things and keep adding maps. And we, we've all done this before, so nothing crazy going on here. But you can kind of see where the power comes in. So to bring it back, just to not lose you guys, <laughs> very simple. You have a value wrapped in its context. This could be objects, arrays. You apply map to it, map takes the value out, it applies the function, puts it back into context, and then it returns you that value in its context. So you can keep mapping it again and again, right? So another simple example, here's an array. We map it, the fat arrow function transforms the context into a new array, and then we, when we lock that new array, we get 9, 12, 15, nothing crazy. It's very easy to understand, right? So now, it's another very simple example. I'm not going to go over it. But basically, you can see it just takes out the key and the value out of this, this array. And then, pretty simple. Not, I'm going to keep moving on. <laughs> so I think you guys get the essence of what a functor is. So monads, what's the, what's the difference between a functor and a monad? Monads are basically functors on steroids. <laughs> They're very, very strong. Very bonds. All, the, all, all that. <laughs> so, like it says, monads are a type of functor. Um, They're prevalent in Haskell because they love pure functions and they only use pure functions. So, as we said earlier, a pure function is, um, is basically a functor. Um, it's a powerful tool in functional programming, which we're very interested in, and they allow us to handle asynchronous code, which is why we're so interested in monads. 
So here, uh, a, a nice little code that I found in the YouTube channel, Fun Fun Functions. And let me walk you guys through what's going on here. On line 33, you can see that we're, well, on line 32, we see stream, and we're calling flat map on it. And then there's a function that's get in Portuguese. So let me, let me, guide, let me explain the get in Portuguese function first. In this function, you can see we're making a get request using fetch to Google's API. And then we create a promise out of it. From that promise, we, we don't want to return a promise. We want to return a stream. I know we haven't touched on streams, but streams are basically monads. But you're gonna, you guys are going to start to see where the power comes in. So using Bacon.js, we take that promise, turn it into a stream, and then we return a stream. right? So let's go back to this. So, so you guys can see we're returning a stream. And if we try to map over that stream, we're going to get the bacon stream. Right? We're going to get the bacon stream because that's what we're returning. But that's not what we want. We want, we, want, we want the values, right? So we use flat map for that. Flat map basically waits for the value to be resolved in that stream. It, it waits for it to be resolved. Then it returns you the value, right? So I, I think we've heard this before. I think we've done this type of work before. And you, you guys are going to see how. But basically, after, after we have that value, it's, it's basically just another functor. Like I said, monads are types of functors. So then we can map over it. And we could do all sorts of cool things like we usually, like we're used to. Uh, moving on, promises. This is, this is basically a type of monad. And that's why it all kind of makes sense now. If you see in this simple um, get request, we're making a simple get request to, we could see that after user, after we call user that find all, we get a promise. From there, we could call that then on it. If you guys haven't put it together yet, that then is basically like calling flat map. Flat map and that then, they kind of do the same thing. It's just that we're not used to those names. And uh, as you can see, and after in that then, the rest that JSON doesn't return the object literal that, that uh, we've used rest that JSON before, and it doesn't return the object literal. What does it return? It returns a promise. So then you could keep working off of that, right? And from there, um, there's more monads that we could talk about. There's bind and chain. And then, like I mentioned earlier, like I just wanted you guys to get the context of the basic understanding of what a monad is, functors, and how they're very powerful. I don't know if you guys remember when we first learned about promises, we were very excited about how much easier they made our lives. And I just want you guys to remember there's other, there's other powerful dot dens out there that we're, we should probably look into and study because it's going to help us out. <laughs> In conclusion, there's a lot more to learn. Functional programming could be awesome if you make your life easier. And as you can see, from functor to Mona, there's, there's a lot in between that I didn't go over. And, and we, we have a lot to learn. But once, once we get there, it, it'll just make our lives a lot easier. Um, I want to make sure I give credit to the links that I referred to in this presentation, basically fun, fun function. And um, Douglas Crockford from Google Tech. Um, and I can't pronounce his name, but Go to those links, read more into it, and you'll see that it'll make your capstones a little bit easier to work with if you guys just focus on that. Thank you. <laughs>